Hey everyone, this is Hadrian. Thanks for watching. Let's keep going with our Civilization 5 tutorial. But first, let me pull up some stuff. Because I just booted the game back up. <laughs> okay, got my interface back to the way I like it. So, let's take a second and just look at how things are going. We had caravels scouting like crazy. And as you can see, we have a pretty good shot of the entire world now. Not everything yet, but we can see most of North America now. Hiawatha controls the majority of it. So again, that's a very... Um, Believable scenario had colonization in the 15th century never started to happen uh, in the in the real world. This is what you would see. <laughs> so we have an indigenous indigenous American civilization uh, definitely um, populating all of North America, and it looks like they now have a city in Mexico as well. And then of course we have the Maya down here. The Maya are also sending a great prophet to bother me, which is really annoying. So there's just really just fun going in and going on in Africa right now. Australia is completely uncolonized and still overrun by barbarians. So I'm considering possibly doing something there. But I also, before I do anything else, oh, okay. Looks like Poland has established themselves up there. So hang on. Okay. If we found a city there, we'll either have to take over this Polish city in what is actually England, or we'll have to found a city here after taking over Vatican City. I still kind of want to do that. I just think it would be fun. We control what this game considers to be Italy. <laughs> this little stub of land. Um, but I think we can do better than that. I would like to expand pretty soon. But at the same time, like I said, I'm still building things. For instance, the Circus Maximus. The completion of wonders like this, both starting construction and following through with construction, depends upon all of my cities having a coliseum. So the second I establish a new city with no buildings in it, my ability to build those kinds of wonders and other useful things goes away. So there's a certain downside to expanding when I'm not ready to expand. Let's go to the next turn and see what happens. Yeah, there's actually a... Incan missionary coming in, or Iroquois missionary. Okay, Iroquois missionary and great prophet. So we have religious leaders from all three of the other religions, I think. Maybe even more. Because there's a they have a religion over here as well. Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay, so all these cities that were thrilled that we had gotten them certain resources are no longer thrilled, and they're all making new demands. That's what these icons mean. As your empire gets larger and larger, you'll see more and more of these. Not going to lie, it's kind of annoying, but that's the way it works. Let's take a quick look at things that we could possibly buy. Are we ready to start... But And by buy, I mean buy with faith. I wonder if we're ready to start cleansing these cities. I think we are. All right, so in Rome, we're going to buy an Inquisitor. The reason we're going to buy him in Rome is if we bought an Inquisitor or a missionary in a Christian city, it will be a Christian missionary. I want a Pagan Inquisitor. So, can't move him till next turn. Let's choose Production in Mediolanum. Uh, yep, let's go for that zoo. Need that happiness. I want to make sure it stays nice and high, above 36. One of the other benefits, of course, of having very high happiness is it's much easier to kind of churn your way to your next golden age, to where you're more consistently having bonuses to your gold income, to your culture income, and... Um, what was it? Production, of course. I knew there was a third bonus. <laughs> it's still morning. Leave me alone. Alright, so these caravels are being attacked by barbarians. Alright, we're going to send our Inquisitor first to... Tell you what, where are there the most followers? Looks like Cersei might be the most important city to send them to. Because there are no followers of paganism in Cersei. It's an entirely Christian city. So we're going to take care of that right now. We're going to tell that caravel to auto-explore. To ignore those pesky people. Still waiting for this tile to connect here. I can't purchase it. So one thing we could do if we got a great general, which we'd have to do some combat to get a great general, but I mentioned in a previous episode that the culture bomb ability that the great artist had in vanilla civilization 5 before gods and kings no longer exists but the um 
great generals, of course, do have that ability. All right. I'm going to go for the amphitheater in Certe. I have a lot of gold as well, so I need to start giving it to city-states to make sure that... Uh... Okay, interesting. That was Hiawatha doing some converting. But yeah, I'm going to be giving a lot of gold to city-states to make sure that I have allies. This is going to be important for a number of reasons. The first of which I've explained multiple times during the campaign. Okay. Having city-states as allies helps me with food, happiness, and all kinds of things. But also, when the... Oh, cool. It's time to vote, I think. When the Congress, when the World Congress expands to the next uh, stage as we progress through history, city-state allies will give additional delegates. And since Maria currently has more delegates than me, that'll be a way that I can kind of hold on to power. All right, so... We're going to go ahead and buy the friendship of Bratislava. So we have a little bit of extra culture coming from them. I <laughs> I was watching back through a previous episode. I think this is a few episodes back now, but I, I totally caught myself saying um, to Malacca here. Oh, we're not friends with them anymore. Hang on. Dang it. Okay, I need to fix that. But I said that we gave them 30 gold. No, I definitely gave them 500 gold. But we got 30 influence for it, so hopefully those of you who are keeping up <laughs> knew that's what was going on. Okay, good. We can finally build the Oxford University. I'm going to go ahead and build that in Ravenna. That's based on having a university in all cities, so that's helpful. Well, we're going to build an aqueduct in Aratium. And technology tree. What would be the best technology to build next? Or to research next. Looks like metallurgy would be the next. All right, now it is time to vote. This is what the vote screen looks like. So you can see what the other people might vote for. If you have spies in certain cities, you're more likely to know what they're going to vote for. For instance, I have a diplomat in Casimir's capital, so we know what he's going to vote for. He's going to vote for the World's Fair. Uh, arts funding is the proposal coming in from the Maya. There's always just two proposals. I would be lying if I told you that I understood... Um, who got the proposals, but actually, come to think of it, I think this was the civilization that had the other scroll, and I was remarking on, okay, that's interesting, they have a scroll, maybe that's what that means, that means any civilization with a scroll over their little icon here, indicates that uh, it, that they are going to be one of the ones making a uh, proposal. So the thing with arts funding is it, it will decrease the generation of great scientists, engineers, and merchants, and increase the generation of great writers, artists, and musicians. I'm going to put all of my votes into trying to stop arts funding. I think the World's Fair is going to pass. I need to stop this because I want the generation of all great people to stay the same. So we're going to vote against that. And the Maya are not going to be happy with us because we voted against their proposal. But they're just going to have to deal with it. Okay. And as you can see, I have open borders with Maria, even though I completely forgot about it because I just sailed straight into her territory. All right, so we found a lot a lot of ancient ruins. Like I said, Australia has been completely unexplored. So a lot of ancient ruins in Australia. We need to head that way at some point. Circus Maximus is almost done. That'll be a nice happiness boost when that finishes. We should also unlock a new trade route soon be able to make some additional money. Okay, Askia just wants to renew our gold gold per turn for salt deal. That's fine. I have plenty of salt. Okay, Casimir's completed the Red Fort. I'm feeling I might have to go to war with Casimir before I go to war with the Songhai. Okay, arts funding failed and the World's Fair passed. Perfect. That is exactly what we wanted. Okay, and as you can see, there's more new demands. Not paying too much attention to them right now. Bratislava, we want to go ahead and give a gift to so we can get some more influence. And let's choose production in Neapolis. Is there anything that absolutely has to be built right now? Or sh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put some production into World's Fair. Unfortunately, while this city's production is going towards the World's Fair, it can't build anything else, which is annoying. Um, so it does kind of slow us down in a way but it's still going to be very helpful to have. 
So let's see. Now there's not as much of a clear choice with what I could enact. Each world wonder provides three culture to its city. Sure. Let's propose that. People probably aren't going to be happy because I have lots of wonders. But then again, there are other civilizations that have lots of wonders this game too. So you never know. I didn't actually look and see. It's, it's possible with those proposals to actually see who would be grateful and who wouldn't be grateful if you made those proposals. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait a minute. Worker, you need to go there. We have a cotton resource that we can expand. All right, now our Inquisitor has arrived in Certe. Let's remove heresy. <laughs> okay, so there's no religious followers in Certe now, but there will be soon-ish. All right, we cannot, we don't have enough money to upgrade our legion, but we need to start thinking about upgrading our troops. Because I would imagine, <laughs> yeah, the Maya are pissed at us. I would imagine we're going to start uh, preparing for war, maybe expanding definitely into Poland's territory, stopping the advance of Christianity a bit. But we might also go to war with the Songhai just to have a nice big Roman Empire. It's a little bit late. It's 1808 for us to really be starting an empire conquering other civilizations. But, you know, we had all of Africa to build for ourselves, so it gave us an opportunity to build up a strong civilization prior to starting any wars. Plus, this is just kind of the way the game goes. It's tough to have big, drawn-out, epic wars early in history. It sucks. I wish it was not that way, and I hope Civ Six addresses that. I really do, because um, I think it would make the game much more robust. All right, we're going to have the World's Fair being produced in Rome. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to have all my cities go towards the, the World's Fair here. Or am I? Maybe Cert say I won't, because we're still building important stuff here. Let's build an opera house for that extra culture boost. I should be good with just those three cities, actually, going towards the World's Fair, because there's so much production happening. If you're ever competing with other players, then, yeah, you, you better put all your cities towards the World Fair and try, and try and pull out all the stops. But the AI typically does not very aggressively pursue it. So we should win it. You can check its progress at any point by just pointing to any of these icons, whether it's Arpinum, Rome... So, so it's 6% completed. So far, we've contributed 114 production. And there will occasionally be updates on that as well. Okay, we're going to construct a plantation on that cotton. Okay. Maria wants some of our salt. Hiawatha wants to renew our trade deal. That's fine. I do not have an issue with that. We're making lots of money now. so And we're going to keep making more and more. So it's going to be very easy for us to keep these city-states as allies. I think I want to go ahead and no longer ally of Cape Town. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well. All right, we're ally of Malacca again. You're receiving three happiness from them. I got thrown for a second because the tooltip was saying I was receiving zero happiness. <laughs> All right, Kume. I'm going to go ahead and build a, a windmill in Kume. Actually, tell you what, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to have Kume working on the World's Fair. I'm going to have Rome working on a wonder. But the question is, which one? Yep, Ironworks. Nine turns, and Rome will be able to build stuff much faster. It will be easy to beat other civilizations to the endgame wonders. And uh, let's do a temple in Aratium. Still want to build up as much faith as possible every turn. Only Latin paganism followers down here, with the exception of Antium. There is one Christian uh, follower in Antium. Your city converted. Neapolis has been converted to another religion, so... Protestantism is, has now made its way to Neapolis, which raises the question, what are the benefits of Protestantism? Let's go to the religious overview. World religions, beliefs is where we need to look. Aha! Awesome. <laughs> the other two faith-based buildings <laughs> are now available to us. <laughs> so we can get another. Before we convert the city away, we basically will be able to have every faith-based building uh, before we convert Neapolis back to our religion, which is hilarious. Um, so yeah, we got that. 
Special Agent Lucina discovered that Casimir 3 is constructing Ufizi in Warsaw. That's fine. I never try to build Ufizi. Or however the heck you pronounce that. Ufizi, maybe? All right, so Caravan, where are you going? Where are you going, Caravan? Go back to Cape Town. All right, I have lots of gold. Let me make sure I'm not about to lose any allies. I actually just lost Cape Town. Let me fix that. And in one turn, we'll have Metallurgy. Oh, it looks like they just converted Cape Town, or tried to. Yeah, this is a Mayan great prophet. And the Mayans are Buddhist. So I'm not quite sure what they're doing. They're all the way over here trying to create Buddhist followers. There never was we have reached the industrial era. Awesome. Because you've entered a new era, the bonuses you receive from some city-states have increased in value. We have a new spy available to us. So let's go ahead and put a diplomat in... Who's the second most powerful uh, civilization? Let's have a look, shall we? Hiawatha? Okay. So we're going to put a diplomat in Hiawatha's capital which is Onondaga, I believe. Yep, Onondaga. All right, choose production in Mediolanum Temple. Okay, we have a lot of really cool choices now. I kind of want to go for, hmm. It's not, th these are all really good. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Uh, let's go for industrialization first, because that is going to yield some very interesting changes. Specifically, the ability to build factories. Um, but there is a huge change to social policies that comes when we have arrived in the industrial era and have built some factories, or specifically when we have researched industrialism. So we need to move for that. So we're now at 40 extra happiness every turn, in part because we've ex we've worked on that cotton there. These tiles are workable by Arpinum, even though they're across the Red Sea, so I'm going to improve all of them. I'm going to build a farm there. Okay, the Maya is at least happy with our new proposal, even though they hated our response to theirs in the First World Congress. As you can see from this number here, there are 25 votes, or 25... 25 votes. 25 turns until we vote again. Okay, we're losing grasp on Malacca again. Your city converted. Serce is Christian again. Not surprising. All right, well, that was a waste of an Inquisitor then. But at least I showed you how they work. I was expecting paganism to maybe spread there a little faster, but... It decided it didn't want to, so we're going to build a mine there on those dunes. We're going to mine some sand. <laughs> okay, let's see how this is going. So we've contributed 363 production to the World's Fair. Antium, let's go ahead and change your production. Have a windmill. As much as I like having science production happening in Antium, it's not my main focus right now. Your city converted. Neapolis has been converted to... I thought that's that was the religion Neapolis already was. Now I'm confused. What are you telling me, game? Maria has entered the industrial era. So there you have it. We're actually ahead of Maria te technologically, whereas she was ahead of us several turns back. So we've gained the lane technologically mainly because we stole two technologies from her while at the same time accelerating how fast we were researching. World's Fair update. So this popped up. We should now be able to see who's actually leading. Or not. Hmm. I thought by clicking on that you could actually check who's leading. Maybe I'm imagining that. Okay. So. I'm starting to think about military. But if I'm going to do that, 
I need to start building barracks. Huh. I'm going to put one more turn. Well, not Cersei. That's not a high production city. That's useless. Uh, yeah, let's do a forge there instead because they have iron and that'll help them produce faster. Pretty soon we'll be able to maybe put another city towards the World's Fair just to make sure that we get it. Or we might even do it with Rome when Rome is done with the uh, Iron Works in five turns. The Iron Works is a huge production boost that you can only get access to when you have a workshop in all of your cities. We're no longer an ally of Malacca. Let's fix that. Hey, we're allies with Malacca. Okay. All right, so we've got our cargo ship going back to Vancouver. Aratium. Let's build an opera house, get some additional culture going there. And on that note, I think I will go ahead and cut this episode here. And in the next one, we'll continue to work towards the World's Fair, which when that finishes, we're going to get a very nice culture boost, which will help us generate some additional social policies for 20 turns. We're going to get a free social policy, and we're going to get 500 points towards the next Golden Age. And it looks like in the next turn, we're going to enter a Golden Age. As a matter of fact, let's just make it happen right now. End on a high note, right? Unless the game wants to just take forever. Processing. 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 Oh, Neapolis is Buddhist now. So it did convert to another religion. Okay. Good to know. I'll have to play with that in the next episode. See if they have any religious buildings I can purchase. And there's our golden age. Excellent. All right. On that note, I'm going to stop there. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I upload new episodes in Civilization V's tutorial every day at noon, Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus four. For those of you not in the States, if the Civ V tutorial is over when you're watching this, which could be a bunch of you, uh, then of course I'll be playing something else with kind of a grand strategy or historical strategy vibe in the noon slot. And then maybe something sci-fi survival or otherwise um, sim related, simulation related in the... Uh, 6 p.m. slot. But anyway, that's that. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next episode.